drop everything. Make <clears throat> sure I get that off of there. Um, all right, so 10 point, get this over a little bit here. It's been lines up straight. 10.6a <clears throat> is dealing with solving quadratic inequalities. And in quadratic inequalities, when you're working with these, of course, we've got greater than and equal to. We have less than or equal to. And when you have these two pieces, it will mean the value you find will be included in the answer. Meaning that you are going to use brackets if you're asked to do um, interval notation. So brackets for interval. If you've got equals involved. We've had those a long, 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 long time ago. Uh, we haven't had them lately, but they have been in um, what we've been working with before. If I have greater than and I have less than, these are going to mean, it means the value you find is not included <clears throat> in the answer. And you're going to use parentheses with this one when you do interval notation. Okay, so use parentheses in there when you use your interval notation. <clears throat> now the thing that we're going to find with these before we ever get into solving any of them is that what it's going to do is it's going to break our number line. If we have a number line, it'll break our number line into separate pieces. And when it breaks it into separate pieces, each of these sections represents some part that that parabola is touching or that parabola is going through or it's connected with. And if you have a parabola coming through and it's touching in these spots, what happens is it breaks that graph into three different pieces. And because it breaks it into three different pieces, based on what your shading happens to be, is if this is true in the middle, meaning that the inside of your parabola is shaded, then what we would end up saying is the interval that makes this parabola true is the space between 4 and 7. So if you happen to have had a greater than or equal to, then if you're doing interval notation, you would say between 4 and 7 is my true location. Now I know this may not make sense right now, but it will when we get into solving some of these questions and what ends up taking place with those. So if this were the true part, we would say that our interval would be between these two areas. If this part were false, and let me put my 4 and my 7 back up here, and my parabola came down and did one of these numbers, but this is false in here, meaning that any answer, any value that I'm going to pick that's in between these two values is going to make that thing not to come out to be true in there. So what does this mean? Well, then it means that everything around the outside of my parabola is shaded um, with that. And so if I had this situation and I had a greater than or equal to, what this would mean is that this goes out to negative infinity this comes to positive infinity. So if I wanted my interval notation on this piece, I would have to say it's negative infinity to 4 because I never know where, in, in infini or, yeah, where negative infinity ends. I need a parenthesis. But because it's a greater than or equal to, I need to include my 4 with a bracket. And then I'm going to union this with the opposite end, which is a bracket 7, and I don't know where positive infinity ends, 
so I put a parenthesis out there. Okay. All right or not all right? What do you guys think so far? Okay. But it's going to give you an idea of where these pieces happen to be and where it happens to end up um, within these and what takes place with that. So if we take a look at some of these um, that we happen to have, we're going to end up finding, last time we talked about the zero values where that parabola crossed our x-axis at, and we found some things about that, that if it crossed in two points, then of course it hit the x-axis. We also found that if we had a graph and it's hanging up above, like this one, if it's up in that region, it never crosses the x-axis. Remember those from last time? If, if it doesn't cross in here at all, then you've got this, this parabola that's not touching in any area. So it changes what we have to do with those. But in, in a lot of the cases, they're going to touch at some point in here of where we happen to have um, our values within that. So let's um, go through and see if we can, can take a look at one of these. Um, and let's first put down the rules of what we need to do. Um, for it, and I think that might be help, helpful um, first off. First thing is arrange the equation so that it is um, in standard form. Standard form means that you have ax squared plus bx plus c, and you're going to have an inequality in here, but you have to have it in that format. So you want it where you have all of the different variable pieces and the constant term to whichever side of zero that you need to have it to. So you want to make sure that you have it in that form. Step two is factor. Some of these things are going to factor or use the quadratic equation, or the quadratic formula, I should say, to solve the <coughs> um, equation. So we're going to do that. So we're going to use that, and we're going to end up factoring it so that we end up getting, out, getting what it's supposed to be and make sure that you use that. So if you use the quadratic formula, um, that's the piece there. Then set each piece equal to zero and solve for the letter. Now, if you have the quadratic equation or the quadratic formula, each is equal to zero already. So each is going to be equal to zero already. So you're going to have that piece in place. Um, step three, mark the above values on a number line. in order from smallest to largest. So we're going to go from smallest to largest um, with what we have in there. Step four <coughs> is um, create test points between the values um, from step four, or from step two. So you're going to end up getting those values from step two. So I'll watch that one. And check to see which are true or false. And again, this will make more sense when we go through and actually do one of these um, problems. And the solution consists of the intervals.
So it's going to be consisting of those intervals. So wherever those intervals happen to be, that's the piece we're going to end up finding with those. I'll let you get caught up on writing. <clears throat> then we'll go through one so you get an idea of what it does look like. Okay, a problem. So if we have x squared minus 2x is greater than 8. So if this were my problem that I had, it's not in the correct format, so I need to subtract 8. So I get the whole thing connected and um, it's all on one side and it has, an equal, has a 0 on the opposite side of it. Now if I notice with this, there is no equals. So because there is no equals right here, what that's going to mean is that when I get my answer, the values that I come up with can never be included in my answer because it gets close to them but it doesn't touch them. It's kind of like um, way back when we did um, dotted or dashed and solid lines and we had inequalities when we graphed a straight line and in that case we had to end up saying that we had had dotted lines or dashed lines so what this means is that even though I have a parabola in that u-shaped pattern it's gonna be a dashed parabola because I can't include anything that's on the exact parabola okay so that's what that's getting at so then if I look at this can I factor it no if I look at a negative 8, can I get a negative 2? And what are we all going to say? Can I factor it? What was it? Yeah, x minus 4, x plus 2 is greater than 0. So then I take each piece and set it equal to 0. And I find out that x could be 4. Or if I minus 2 over here, x could be a negative 2. So now I need to check it. So I've solved step 1. Step 1 was to get my pieces together. Step 2 was to factor it and make sure I got all of my pieces. Step 3 is to create a number line with the values that I'm given. Since negative 2 is smaller than 4, it goes on the first side and 4 goes on the other. And remember, out here is a negative infinity and over here is a positive infinity. So what this has done for me is it said, okay, I have this parabola over here. The parabola is coming through and it's touching at a negative 2 and it's touching at 4 is where it's crossing or those zero, va zero values happen to be. Now I need to determine what part of this parabola is going to get shaded. So my parabola because again it's got to be dash that comes through here is looking like so and as it looks like so I got to determine is this piece outside shaded or is it shaded on the interior so I need to pick some test points so on the opposite side of a negative 2 a test point on that side might be and I'm going to do those in a different color just so that we know that they're test points the opposite side of a negative 2 might be a negative 3 because notice it sits to the to the, the uh, left of a negative 2 what can I pick in between a negative 2 and 4 what's our always our grandest fantastic number we want to use the most if we can use it 0 yes if we can use 0 it makes my math a whole lot easier right because every time I plug it in um, I have that piece disappear and then on the opposite side of 4 we might pick something like a 5 as my test value so if I go through, and since 0 is a real easy one to check, I'm going to go back to my original equation, and I'm going to plug 0 in 
where x is at, and I'm going to see if I get something that's true. So 0 squared minus 2 times 0 is greater than 8. Well, this whole side equals, what's that whole side equal? 0, right? Is that true statement, or is that a false statement? Is 0 greater than 8? False. So what that means is this piece is false. So if that's false, what does it really tell me? Tells me I'm going to shade outside. Okay, so the values that I'm going to pick are going to be out here because what really is shaded on this parabola is around the outside area. So then in, um, that was step four. In step five, I got to figure out what I'm going to have for my notation. Well, there's two ways of noting this. One is algebraic, and it kind of bounces back and forth between that. And algebraic just means that I'm going to use x in this case because that's my variable. So what would I say? Well, I'm going to go, I know that x needs to be less than a negative 2 because I need this piece. We okay with that part? So I'm not really going back to this inequality. This inequality helped me get what I needed out of here and what I needed to shade. But when I write my, any, write my algebraic values out, I just need to look at what's happening out here. Okay? So on this side, what's happening? Well, it's got to go from 4, so x needs to be greater than 4. We okay with that? Yes or no? So what would go in between these? An or. Because an or, if I put an or in there, that or means that it's this thing or this thing will make it true. And so that would be my combinations that I would happen to have. Now if you're saying, well, I don't know, the thing about only checking one point up here is that you better be doggone certain you did your math right. Okay? But if I check a negative 3 in here, what would I end up with? Well, a negative 3 squared minus 2 times a negative 3 is that greater than 8. And we know just by sign wise, a negative 3 times a negative 3 is 9. Negative 2 times 3 is a plus 6. And right now I am bigger than 8, correct? So I know that I did things right and this side is true. Alright, so if you want to double check that, make sure that you do end up double checking what takes place in there. And you can use your calculator and stuff with that. So if I got my algebraic notation, then I need to go to interval notation because it bounces back and forth. And my interval notation is simply from, and read left to right, from a negative infinity to a negative 2, can't include them, unioned with a positive 4, but I can't include it, to a positive infinity. And that becomes my answers to this one. Okay or not okay? We'll do some more so we have an idea of what's taking place with them and what does end up happening. But that's just one example. So basically, recapping it, I moved my 8 over. I checked to see if I could factor it, and I could. Set each of these pieces equal to 0. Set up my number line with a negative 2 and 4. Check to see what sides ended up making this thing come out to be true. Okay. And I found out that was 0 in the center. I checked it, and it was false. So that refers or lets me know that if this is false, this has to be true, and this has to be true. They kind of go in opposite connections with that, so you kind of bounce back and forth with those. So you want to make sure that you're, you're careful with those and do your checking. Okay, let's take a look at another one. <clears throat> The, it, it, the question is, is it just algebraic that you got to use, or is it interval you got to use? Um, it bounces back and forth. So one time it'll say, okay, give me the algebraic one. Then the next question will come up on the exact same problem and say, what's the interval? 
And then the next one might come up and say, uh, what does that look like on a number line? Well, if you get the number line ones, then what you got to do is you have to tell it, and down below here it'll say parentheses, it will say two brackets, it will say a parenthesis and a bracket, or a bracket and a parenthesis, whoops, parenthesis going the right way, and then you'd have to stick it on your number line too. So it kind of gets you coming and going in all different directions. So if we had this last one that we just had, we had um, x needed to be less than a negative 2, or x needed to be greater than 4, and so what would that look like on my number line? Well, here's negative infinity, and here is positive infinity. So on my number line, you would have a parenthesis, and the line would go out in this direction. You would have a parenthesis, and the line would go out in this direction. So it's kind of got has that one in there too. So you got some combinations of heading in different directions with that one. So if you had number line notation, that's the kind of thing you got to do with it. And you'd have to pick down here in Hawks. I have to pick this one because it, I don't know where it ends in infinity, and I can't include it. And I'd have to pick it for the second one. And you move your arrows across and move them back and forth on there um, with that one. So, yeah. Okay, here is another one. How about um, 2x squared minus 13x plus 15 is less than or equal to 0. So this one I don't need to do step 1 on because it's already set equal to 0. But I need to look at it and see if I can factor it. What do you guys think? Can I factor it? And if you look at it for a while and say, eh, I don't know if I can factor it or not, you can always, of course, use the quadratic formula um, with it. What was that? All right, so if I can do that, what do I got to have up here? Well, 2x squared gives me a 2x and an x, correct? And you said I need to create 10, so that means I must have to have a 5 here. And a 3 here, correct? And because this is a positive 15, but it's negative in the middle, both things are negative. That's that long factoring. If you take 2x squared times 15, you get 30. Factors of 30 that give me a negative 13. Then you do that groupings and that kinds of combinations with it. Now, if you don't want to do that, again, just jump in and do the a equals 2, b equals negative 13, c equals 15, and do your quadratic with it. Okay? So either way, you're going to get the correct answer out of there. So then if I take 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, and x minus 5 is equal to 0, um, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And I'm going to divide by 2. So x equals 3 halves. And then I'm going to add 5. So x equals 5. And so I've got my two locations. It's a parabola touching on my x-axis. Set up my number line. Which is larger, 3 halves or 5? Sometimes you got to really think about those. So 5 is over here and 3 halves is there. And what are some test points that go in between here? Well. The other side of 3 halves, what can, what can I use over here? Zero. Zero. Use my favorite. Okay. Now remember, you're working with a number line, so you have in between here um, all kinds of points that you can use. Okay. So to the left of 3 halves is zero. What would we pick in the middle? And again, you just need something that's the other side of 3 halves, but lower than 5. So we might use 2 in there. And what about this side? And I'd say just use 6. Those are my test points. So now what I need to do is plug them back into the original equation. So 2 times 0 squared minus 13 times 0 plus 15 is less than or equal to 0. True statement, well, these guys are gone because they're zeros. 
is 15 less than or equal to 0. So this piece is false. You okay with that? So what must the 2 be? If this is false, 2 is probably, probably true, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because 2 times 2 squared plus, or minus 13 times 2 plus 15 is less than 0. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 26 plus 15 is less than or equal to 0. So 8 plus 15, that's going to give me, what, 23? And so I've got 23 minus 26 is less than or equal to 0. And sure enough, uh, negative 3 is less than 0, so I know this is true. So if it's true, what must the last one be? This one must be false. Mm -hmm. Okay, we good so far? So now, what has to happen in here? What do I have? What's taking place in between here and there? That's my true part. So what this means is my parabola, and it can be solid because the um, values are solid. So what's happening is it's inside of there that gets shaded. So um, what are my values? What could I plug in here that's going to show me that this is going to work out to be true? Well, right here, um, I can include the three halves. So if I did um, algebraic, what this is basically saying is x is sitting between these two. So 3 halves needs to be less than or equal to x. At the same time, x needs to be less than or equal to 5. And that's what I would put into my hawks if it asked me for an algebraic statement of what it would end up equaling. So I've got this piece that goes in between. Now, error in putting these things in? Yeah. Um, when I went through and did my certifying and did my um, practice pieces, you have to pay very close attention in making sure that you get the correct inequalities, the correct stuff that's taking place with those because it's not going to end up coming out right if you don't. I know there were a couple that I put in there and it's like, oh shoot, I left off that symbol on the bottom. So be really careful with that part and make sure you do what you're supposed to. So interval, so an interval notation, what would I say? Well, it's between here and here. So an interval, and I can include them because I've got a equals in there. So it's going to go between 3 halves and 5. And that would be my interval notation. So that's where that piece happens to be. So that's what the interval piece of it is. And so you've got that section in there. So you want to make sure you watch those those pieces and how they connect in there. Number line, if it says a number line, well, I'm going to definitely have to pick my brackets. And it's going to be bracket 3 halves to a bracket at 5. And it will have your number line piece in between those two if you're asked to do a number line. OK? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. OK. Now, a lot of it is just the case of, of working slowly at this stuff and um, working your way through of what you happen to have <clears throat> with them. Now, once in a while, it gives you a cube in there, too. And the cube is not the kind of cube that we've had in the past um, where you had to get the, the um, take it and factor it to get your cubes. This one, you simply need to, notice there's an x in each one of these. So when I factor it, if I pull out an x, I get x squared plus 4x minus 5. <clears throat> and I've just pulled out my x to get it so it's, so it's um, broken down so I can factor it. So then if I take this piece and I factor that, what does it factor to? I can get an x and an x. Mm -hmm. Yep, x minus 1 and x plus 5. So I've got it factored. Set each thing equal to 0. Now the difference between this one and the last one that we just did is that there's three breaks in your number line instead of only one. There's when x is 0, there's when x is 1, and there's when x is a negative 5. 
so you've got three kind of breaks that are taking place with this one. If you have a cube and you put it on your graphing calculator, you're going to end up with something that does like so. That's why there are three spots in which this thing is crossing the x-axis at. And so that's why you have three pieces to it. And so your shading comes out a little strange because you shade this way or you shade the outside so you've got different combinations that happen to come together. So if I write this thing out as 0, negative 5, and 1, because i got to put them in order, can't use my favorite because 0 is part of my solution. Shucks, right? <laughs> so I can't use it. So, but I can use some stuff that might be kind of close to what I can do. Now, my problem comes in between 0 and 1. Now, not a whole lot going in between 0 and 1. Um, you, in, I could probably use 0.5 in there to represent my half. In between negative 5 and 0, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, so I get my negative 1. The other side of a negative 5 is a negative 6. And the other side of 1, I could probably use a 2. Are we okay in finding these? Because that's kind of the hard part, is going in between these to get what your test points are going to be. So, I don't know, we'll try. Why don't we try and see, we can, well, we can plug a negative 6 in and see what happens. Negative 6 cubed plus 4 times a negative 6 squared. You always go back to the original and see if it makes it true. If I find a true, what's going to happen is it's usually true, false, true, false. But make sure that you do your math correctly. So you might want to check double on these so that you make sure you get everything. What's a negative 6 cubed? Anybody got it out there? Negative 6 cubed on your calculator? Negative 216, you said? Yep. Okay. Uh, negative 6 squared is positive 32. And positive 32 times 4 is 128. Negative 5 times a negative 6 is a plus 30. And before I even go, let's see, is this going to be true? So negative 216. 28 and 128 and 30 is 158. And a negative 216 plus 158, what's that going to give me? Negative what was it? <coughs> negative what? One more time. 58? Okay. Negative 58. So if I get negative 58, that means that's true. So this side is true. So what do we think of negative 1's? What's going to happen? I check it. More than likely it's going to be false. <clears throat> negative 1 times a negative 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1 is 4. Negative 5 times a negative 1 is a plus 5. <clears throat> And when I do my math down here, negative 1 and 4 is 3. 3 and 5 is 8. So it does come out to be false. So more than likely, what's my half going to be? If you get the pattern down, what's the half going to be? True. True. Mm -hmm. The reason I like to do at least two of them, because then I know I didn't do something wrong with my math. If these both came out to be true, then I know I did something wrong because they can't be next to each other and be true. They're in a pattern. So this last one must be false. So what is my pieces that are shaded? Well, the piece that I need is right here. The other piece I need is right here. And so what would I write for algebraic? So in the algebraic, I would say from x needs to be less than, no equals, because there isn't an equals up above, um, less than a negative 5. And at the same time, x needs to be between 0 and 1. 0 is less than x, but x is less than 1. And so that's my algebraic notation with an or between these. And Hawks will want the or, so make sure you do put your or in there. And then if I have interval, 
interval is negative infinity to a negative 5 unioned with 0 to 1. <clears throat> Again, parentheses because, why do I have parentheses? Because there's no equals, okay? No equals in my original um, with that. Yes? Are we doing okay? It just means that you got to definitely slow down and um, be careful with with what you're doing with these because again they're just kind of they're kind of ones that you have to be careful with uh, another one might be 6x squared plus x minus 4 is less than or equal to 0 <clears throat> can I factor that 6 times a negative 4 is a negative uh, 24, can I get a 1 in the middle, a negative 24? Um, factors of 24 are 1 and 24, that's not going to do it. Um, 2 and 12, that's not going to do it. Um, 3 and 8, no, that's not going to do it. And 4 and 6, that's not going to do it. And that's all I happen to have. So this is actually, right at the moment that you're looking at it, is not factorable. I can't factor it. But I can use my quadratic on it. So A equals 6, B equals 1, and C equals a negative 4. So plug them all in. So I got minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 6 times a negative 4 all over 2 times 1, or 6. Yeah, so I got 12 down there. <clears throat> oh, work it out. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 4 times 6 is a negative 24. Negative 24 times 4 is 56. Positive. <clears throat> is it positive 56? No. No, 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 no. Not 56. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 2 is 8. 96. There we go. That helps. Yeah, 96. That's healthier, I think. Yeah. So, what do I have? Well, I've got negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 97 over 12. Hmm. Can I break 97 apart? Well, for my purposes, what I would like to do with this, because i got to put it on that number line, it's like, what does this thing hold equal? So it's a negative 1 plus the square root of 97 on my calculator divided by 12. What's that going to equal? Round it to the nearest tenth or uh, something on that order. What does that come out to be? So if I stick it on my calculator, I don't know if I can find my spot in here to show it. Eh, kind of. Um, so negative 1 plus square root 97 parenthesis um, equals, divide that by 12, I get 0 0.74. 0 0.74. And then if I go back, second, back, second, back, I can bring back what I had and just go through and change my subtraction, or change my addition to a subtraction, get my answer, divide that by 12, and I get um, negative 0 0.9. Very close together, aren't they? But if I look at my number line and I put these things on there, negative 0 0.9 and 0 0.74, what's in between them? My favorite is in between them, right? Because right in between these two is my good old friend 0. Okay? So what does that do for me? Well, when I do my test point up here, going back to the original, 0 in here, 0 in here, I'm left with a negative 4 is less than or equal to 
to zero. Is that true or false? Is that true or false? True. true. Mm -hmm. So because it's true, I am going to shade this part. This side's going to be false, more than likely, and this is going to be false. So if I even tested a negative 1 in there, 6 times a negative 1 squared plus a negative 1 minus 4 is less than or equal to 0. 1 times 6 is 6. Uh, minus 1 minus 4, it's still going to be 2, or no, 1, which is still greater than 0. And so therefore, I did prove that that was the pieces in there. So what's my answer? So if I were going to put this thing together, my answer is going to be between a negative 1 minus the, or plus the square root of 97 over 12, and the other side was a negative 1 um, minus the square root of 97 over 12. <coughs> and so um, that's where it happens to be, is in between those two. So the algebraic notation would be um, negative 1 plus the square root of 97 over 12 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to negative 1 minus the square root of 97 over 12. And so that would be my, my two, oops, I changed my values in here. This is the minus and this is the plus. I had them backwards. And that would be my algebraic notation for that one. Okay, And I don't think on that one they gave you the other ones to put in there. I think it was just that one um, that you had to check with that one. Okay? Yes? All right. Um, if under your radical piece that you have, it comes out to be imaginary, that's the last typo that they stick in here. 7x squared plus 6x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. <coughs> and I cannot factor this thing. I can't get this piece in the center. So a is 7, b is 6, and c is 4. If I plug all these things in, I have a negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 7 times 4 all over 2 times 7. <clears throat> 6 squared is 32, or 36 I should say. Negative 4 times 7 times 4 is a negative 64. So 36 minus 64 gives me a negative value under there of a negative 28 <clears throat> over 14. The other day when we found those, what it meant is my parabola is hanging up there. It's dangling up above that and it's not touching the x-axis at all. It's just kind of sitting there. And so what does my shading look like if it's hanging there? Negative 76. Did I multiply something wrong? Oh, maybe you did. Oh, yeah, you did because I multiplied um, 16 times 4 instead of 16 times 7. Yes, this should be uh, 112. Thank you for catching that. And so this should be uh, 112 minus 36. It should be 76. Thank you. It should be 76. Okay. So what happens with my shading? Well, if my parabola is hanging like it's hanging here, this could be shaded inside. And if it's shaded inside of here, that means that there's no solution. If it's shaded out here, then it means many solutions, or an infinite number of solutions. But how do I determine that? And the way you determine that is set x equal to 0 and see if the statement 
is true or false. So if I set this whole thing, so I've got 7x squared plus 6x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0, and I know it's got a problem because I get a negative in here, so it's one of these hanging pieces. If I make everything in here and set those x's equal to 0, and if I get a true statement, I get 4 is greater than or equal to 0, which is that true or false? false. That is true. So if it's true, what does that mean? Well, it means that I have many solutions or all real numbers because I can pick anything I want to pick for x to go in there. It's going to make it always work. Okay? It's not going to have any pieces on it. Now if this would have ended up being false, so let's say we had 7x squared plus 6x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0 just for the, the purpose of this x, or let's say we change the sign in here. That's probably what I better do. Um, and I set everything equal to 0, I get 4 is less than or equal to 0. Is that true or false? Well, this is false. So this one has no solution. So if you end up with an imaginary value, if the quadratic formula leaves an imaginary number, you must check to see if it is all real numbers or no solution. And you will know when you get that imaginary number when it pops up um, in there for what you happen to have with that. Another one? Are you good? You're good? Sure? Okay. If you're good, that's good. Stop this guy. It's not harder, it's just that you gotta pay closer attention to one little extra detail in these. In um, 10.6b uh, is looking at inequalities with rational equations or expressions and equations. Okay, rationals, that's going back to chapter 7. If we took a look at um, x plus 3 all over x minus 2 is greater than 0. So what in the world does that mean? Well, it means I have this is my rational piece. It's rational because it has a denominator. And it's going to be that I need to know what that thing is going to look like if it is greater than 0. If I stick this on my graphing calculator, just so you get an idea of what the whole thing ends up looking like, if I put it on my graphing calculator, I'm going to have um, parenthesis x plus 3 parenthesis divided by um, x minus 2. Whoops, I'm going to put that inside of parentheses too or I'm going to be in problems. Okay, if I look at my graph, get this so that we can, whoop, that's getting darker over there. Kind of light in here, but we'll see what we get. If I hit my graph, my graph does one of these numbers. And what it's saying is there's a part in here that it can never touch. And the reason it can never touch this piece is because what that point does, or what that location does, is makes this thing become undefined because my denominator can never equal what? What do you guys think? Zero. zero. Yeah, can never equal zero. 
So what I know so far about this is that x can never equal what? So if I take x minus 2 and set it equal to 0 and I add 2, I'm going to find out that x can never equal 2. All right? So x can never equal 2 because that's where this happens to cross at and where it happens to not touch at. Well, the other part of this is I've got an inequality, and the inequality says somehow there's shading in here. There's shading that's going to take place with this. So if I go back to my y equals, and I go over in front of y, just so you get a picture of what it's going to look like, and I want to have a greater than, that means I want to shade above the line, and if I keep hitting my enter, I finally get to greater than. And now if I hit my graph, it's going to come through and it's going to give me a shaded portion in there. I see how that's shaded now? And what does this mean? Well, it means that there are certain things that will make it shade and certain things that will not. Um, but in this graph, if you look at it, it's shading up to 2. Then it's skipping a space in there and it's shading after the value of 2. So we've got some pieces that are, are causing this thing to shade in certain spots and to do certain things. Now, on here, on the graph, you can't really pick out what it's telling you. You can see it and you know what the shading's going to do, but we have to have a way of, of showing where that's going to be at. So we kind of use all the stuff we just got done using in 10.6a. Uh, so let me get my calculator out of the way here and we'll finish that up. So what do I know? Well, I know x can never equal 2. But now I need to solve it and find out what the other portion of this happens to be. So if I'm going to solve this whole thing, <clears throat> I'm going to take this whole value and multiply it by x minus 2. And when I do that, I multiply this by x minus 2. What do I get? What am I left with? These cancel, so that leaves me with x plus 3. When I multiply 0 by x minus 2, I just end up with 0. So the other side of this is that I can have this thing taking place. x plus 3, so if I minus 3, x has an effect with a negative 3 as well as a positive 2. So now I can divide my number line, just like we just got done doing, into a negative 3 and 2. And that's why I set on my calculator. I can't really show exactly what's taking place there. But I need to figure out what's true and what's false in here. So I do the exact same thing in our trusty, handy thing we really like. 0 I can use, negative 4. And um, on the other side of 2, I can use, oh, we'll use a 3 over there. <coughs> and see which one makes this true. So if I go back to my original statement, I'm going to put this zero thing in there because that might help me out the most. Zero plus three over zero minus two is greater than zero. Is that true? Zero plus three is three. Zero minus two is a negative two, which means I have a negative two thirds, or negative three halves, I should say. Is a negative three halves greater than zero? What would we say? No, it's not. So this piece in the center is false. So what must we know about the first piece? It must be true. And if I want to double check it and make sure it is, a negative 4 plus 3 over a negative 4 minus 2, is that greater than 0? Negative 4 plus 3 is a negative 1. Negative 4 and a negative 2 is a negative 6. And sure enough, 1 6 is greater than 0. It's not a whole lot greater than 0, but it is. And so that means that side's true. So that if that's true, this other end must be true. And so then, what do I do? Exact same thing I've been doing. So algebraic notation. The algebraic notation is going to be... Um, <clears throat> x needs to be less than a negative 3. I can't include it because I didn't have this part. And I can never include 2, so it's also or x needs to be greater than 2. <clears throat> and so that would be my two answers to this one. And if I had to do interval, interval will be <clears throat> 
from negative infinity to a negative 3 with parentheses, <coughs> unioned with parenthesis 2 to infinity. <coughs> and so that becomes my other final answer in there. No, they're not always parentheses, and we'll talk about that in a second. If you have, if it is um, less than or greater than or less than, then you know everything is going to have parentheses, okay? The tricky little piece to it comes in when you have a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to because one of the pieces you can count the other one that makes the denominator come out to be zero you can never count and so it's always going to be a parenthesis for whatever's under here um, with that okay should we try another one okay let's put another one up here and see if we can come up with something for it um, but you just go through and you double check your stuff in here so if I have um, x plus 4 over x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. <coughs> if that's my problem <coughs> that I have, what can x never be? Well, you always take the denominator. x minus 3 equals 0. And so I add 3. So x can never equal 3, okay? So it can never be 3. I can never use that value in there. So then, if I take my problem, and I multiply everybody by x minus 3, those cancel. x minus 3 times 0 is 0, so x plus 4 is equal to 0, <coughs> minus 4. <clears throat> but my problem comes in is x could be a negative 4 because I've got an equals in here, but can never be 3. So what I do on my number line is when I put a negative 4, I can have a negative 4. When I put 3, I know if I circle it or highlight it or do something with it that tells me I cannot have that number in my solution, that's going to remind me when I get to do my algebraic part or my inequality part that I cannot use anything with that. I can only use parentheses there, but here I have to use brackets. Okay, So you want to designate that. You want to do something in your notes or something in your sheets or something in what you're working with to designate that so that you get your correct values in there. So what happens in between? So I need some test points. Well, I can use my good old friend zero because it's in between those two. I can use a negative five and I can use, oh, one on the other side here, um, four, I guess. <clears throat> and so I need to check it and see what works. So if I put zero back in, I'm gonna check my middle first just to see what happens. I have zero plus four all over 0 minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. <clears throat> so then what do I get? Well, I have 4 over negative 3 is less than or equal to 0. Is that true? What would you guys say? No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No. I'm hearing all of them out there. What do we have? It is true, yes, because a negative four-thirds is less than zero, okay? So this is true. So what do you know about this side? If that's true, this must be false. Mm -hmm. And so this side also must be false. And so um, what do I have for an algebraic answer? And this is where it gets a little tricky in Hawks because I can include a negative 4. So that needs to be, x can be a negative 4, but it also has to be bigger. But it cannot ever equal 3. So 
so I need to have a less than there that's no equals. So it can never equal 3. All right, so that's why you got to mark these guys that are making denominators come out to be 0. And if you mark them, you won't get that part mixed up of uh, what you happen to have there. And if I need an interval, what's my interval going to be? Well, interval is um, same type of thing. So uh, from a negative 4 to 3, but I need a bracket and a parenthesis. I need a combination there because I can use a negative 4, but I cannot use 3. Okay? So be really careful. These are the ones that if you put the wrong piece, of course, Fox is going to say, nope, wrong. Okay? So be really careful. I would say with these sections, 6, 10.6 A and B, just slow down with them. Make sure when you put something into Hawks that you know that's what goes there. All right? So double check it uh, because it, it does cost you a bit if you don't end up double checking them. So be real careful with that part. The other one, um, basically they are all just set up with the single values, but they do put a number on the other side, such as if we had um, 2x plus 4 over x minus 6 is less than or equal to a negative 2. <clears throat> now I, in Hawks Instruct, I don't like the method they use because the method that they use in Hawks is to move the negative 2 over here getting it set equal to zero. The only problem with that is you still got to move everything all around yet in order to solve stuff. And so it's just easier when you clear out this denominator just to multiply it by negative two over here and put an equals in the middle because you're basically solving for x in that case and come up with your answer. So let's go through and finish this one. So the first thing I need to do is always the denominator set it equal to zero and I find out that that is 6. So x can never, ever, ever equal 6. Okay. <clears throat> then if I take my problem and multiply equals negative 2, and negative 2 in here, and multiply everything by x equals or x minus 6, these cancel. Negative 2 is going to get multiplied by x minus 6, and you are going to have your um, solution in there. So I get 2x plus 4. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times a negative 6. What happens? Negative 2 times a negative 6 is a plus 12. And then get my x's together. So I'm going to add 2x, get my numbers together. So I have 4x is equal to 8, divide by 4, I find x is equal to good old 2. <clears throat> now, we good at that part? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, if I set up my number line, I have 6, which I am going to circle that 6 because I know I can never, ever, ever in my whole lifetime have 6, right? with this problem. So then I'm going to set my 2 over here. And what do I know about it? If I go back to my original, there wasn't equals. So I know this is going to be bracket stuff. And I know my 6 is going to be parentheses stuff. Okay. So can I use my friend? I'm going to 0. Yep, because 0 is here. In between 2 and 6 is a 4. And over here, we might use a 7, because it's just the opposite side of it. So what happens when I put 0 in? Go back to your original. So 2 times 0 plus 4 over 0 minus 6, is that less than or equal to a negative 2? So 2 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. 0 minus 6 is a negative 6. And is, well, that's got a negative 4, 6. Is that less than a negative 2? Mm, I have a 
back to our basic math stuff of thinking about this thing. Is that true or false? It's false? It is false. Because this is a negative 2 thirds and this is a negative 2. Remember, um, the larger the negative number, the smaller it is. So two, negative 2 thirds is, is um, larger than a negative 2. And so therefore, this is false. So in between must be true. And this other end must be false. And to check it and make sure it is true, I'm going to have 2 times 4 plus 4 over 4 minus 6 is less than or equal to negative 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. 4 minus 6 is a negative 4. 4 di or 12 divided by negative 4 is a negative 3. And that does make a true statement. So I know I did my math right. So what is my algebraic? statement. Well, my algebraic statement means I got to be in between these. So 2 can be included, but 6 cannot be. Okay? So algebraically, that's what I would end up having with that one. So it cannot be included um, with my answer. An interval? Interval, bracket 2, comma, six, parenthesis. Because I put those parentheses in there, I know I gotta have a parenthesis when I get done with that. Okay? Yes or no? I don't understand the algebraic one. You don't understand the algebraic one? Okay. Remember, x is sitting right in here. So what's happening with x? If two is over here, it's x needs to be bigger than two. All right? With six sitting over here, x needs to be smaller than six to to be within this range. Okay? Now, if you were to, way back when in basic algebra, we would take this and break it apart because then it would give me a picture of what my number line would look like. And so if I wanted to look at what my number line would look like, this is actually x is greater than or equal to 2, but x is less than 6. So on my number line, when I'm at 2, I'm going to head all the way over there, okay? When I'm at 6, I'm going to head all the way back this way. So my answer was the overlap in the middle, okay? okay? And that's what this is getting at, because you're getting at that overlapping piece that's in the center of those two. So that's why the algebraic one has stuff on both ends, and you get your variable in the middle um, with that one. Okay. Um, These do not have any um, any imaginary numbers in them, so you don't have that part to work, to worry about. They do happen to have just the, the combinations. There's this one. Um, let me get that one out of the way and show you this. Because once in a while, Hawks will throw one like this in there. <clears throat> Basically, same principle as we've been doing um, with this one. It's just that this is going to have three pieces to it. My denominator, always make the denominator special because it happens to be. So x minus 6 equals 0. So x can never equal 6. You okay with that part? Then if I take x times x plus 4, all over x minus 6 equals 0, because I'm trying to figure out what my top's going to be. I multiply everything by x minus 6. I get x times x plus 4 is equal to x minus 6 times 0 is 0. Now, because this is already factored, I don't want to multiply this together. Don't distribute x equals 0 and x plus 6 equals 0. So x could be 6 and x could be a negative 6. Pardon? What was that? Oh, yes. Plus 4. So it should be minus 4. Mm -hmm. Now, can I include these two? Do these get included? Well, yeah, they do because my original statement had an equals in it. So when I set my number line up, I know 6. I can never, ever, ever use 6. So it's going to be parenthesis and parenthesis. 
I can use 0, so it's a bracket, and I can use negative 4. Okay. So then once I know what I can use and what I can't use, then it's basically the same kind of thing we had been doing before. But I can't use my good old pal 0 because it's part of my problem. So negative 5, negative 1, 1, and a 7 can be my test points. So which one do you want to try first? So I kind of like to look at these and say, okay, which one's going to be the easiest one to work with? What one do you think is going to be the easiest one to work with? Negative 5, negative 1, 1, or 7? I kind of like 1, yeah, because 1 that's sitting right there, 1 makes everything um, pretty easy to work with. So is that a true statement? So 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 times 1 is 5. 1 minus 6 is a negative 5. 5 over a negative 5 is a negative 1. Is that true? No. Is a negative 1 less than 0? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Had to hear it out loud, didn't you? Okay, so this is true. All right, so we get true. So what do you think negative 1 is going to be? If this is true, what's negative 1 going to be? False. False. What's uh, the negative 5 going to be true, and the 7 is going to be false. But we better double check and just make sure. So a negative 5 times a negative 5 plus 4 all over a negative 5 minus 6, is that less than or equal to 0? So we're going to double check and make sure. Um, 5 times, or 5 minus 4 is a negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 5 is a positive 5. Negative 5 and a negative 6 is a negative 11. So sure enough, a negative 5 11 is less than 1, so therefore it is true. So I did my math correctly. So always make sure you check at least another one to make sure you're on the right track, that you didn't make mistakes. So algebraically, so the piece I'm going to use is here. The other piece I'm going to use is in here. So x needs to be less than or equal to a negative 4. So I can include it because of the equals up here. So I had my brackets under there. <laughs> and then I'm going to put an or. 0, x can be 0, but it cannot ever be 6. And that's the little piece that creates most of the problems is that you don't pay close enough attention and make that denominator special enough that it doesn't catch you in the end. And then interval is going to be from a negative infinity to a negative 4 included, unioned with 0 to 6, include the 0, but do not include the 6 because that denominator would be 0 then. So I cannot include the 6 in anything. Okay. What do you think? Can handle them? Mm -hmm. Can you not handle them? Hopefully you can handle them. Yes? Okay. So, um, let me double check and make sure I don't have anything else that's kind of strange and weird in here to this one. I don't think I do. Oh, we might take a look at this one. Mm, I had to slip away on me. Just so we have one more to practice in here. Um, x plus 3 all over 4x is greater than or equal to 0. <coughs> So what can my denominator be, ever be? So my denominator is x is 4x equals 0. So what can what can x never equal in this case? 0. Mm -hmm. Because you divide by 4 to get that one to work. 
then the other one, if you've noticed, when it's zero out here, and we've taken and multiplied by 4x, what happens to it? Well, it just kind of cancels out on the other side. So really, you have x plus 3 is equal to 0. Just if you've got a number in there, you've got more math to do there. So then minus 3. So I get x equals a negative 3. And I can have this. So when I set up my number line, I can have a negative 3. I cannot ever, ever, ever have 0. Put my parentheses my brackets and that will keep it straight of what you got for an answer and you may think oh I don't need to do that I'll remember which is which mm. be really careful with that because this is what catches you in Hawks if you don't keep track of which ones where so test points can't use my good old friend zero so I can use a negative one I can use one and I could use a negative four and I want to use the stuff on the opposite pieces of these and so, um, what do I end up with? Well, uh, I'll test 1. So 1 plus 3 over 4 times 1, is that greater than 0? 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. And I get 1, which is greater than or equal to 0, so I get a true. If I made it a negative one, just to check, three a negative one plus three is an, is a positive two. Four times a negative one is a negative four, and one negative one half is not greater than zero, so I know I did my stuff right. So that comes out false. So this last one must be true on the other end. <clears throat> So, algebraic. If I've got the algebra part of it, I'm going to go x needs to be less than or equal to a negative 3, or x needs to be greater than 0, but no equals there because I can't include it. Okay. And then interval. And in interval, I have um, negative infinity to a negative 3, include the negative 3, unioned with a not included 0 to positive infinity for that one. And a number line, because Hawks like to toss those into the mix. So what would my number line look like? Well, I'd have a negative 3 and I would have zero. Down below, I would need to pick a bracket, parentheses, so be careful. Um, no, I would not have to pick that one. I have to pick a uh, parentheses bracket, get the right one, because I'm going to have a bracket here heading out to infinity, and then I'm going to have parentheses, parentheses for the other one heading out to positive infinity. And so you're going to have those kinds of combinations um, with those. Okay. Good deal.